Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Dogmat School. Today we're going to discuss about edema and effusion. Edema and effusion both are basically the same things. Edema is like both are like brothers. But let's see what as we go further into the discussion, we will get to know much about edema and effusion as well. Disorders that perturb the cardiovascular, renal, or hepatic functions are often marked by the accumulation of fluid in tissues and body cavities. Perturb basically means to alter the normal state of something. Perturb, like if altering of the cardiovascular, renal, or hepatic functions, may, the disorders that alter this, the disorders that alter the normal functioning of cardiovascular system, renal, or hepatic functions, are marked. Means mark like the edema and effusion are basically signs and symptoms of the underlying diseases which alter the cardiovascular, renal, or hepatic functions. The normally, the uh, flu edema, edema and effusion is basically movement of the fluid out of the blood vessel into the interstitial spaces or into the uh, body, ca body cavities. If it occurs into the interstitial spaces, it is called as edema and uh, that's in basically in the tissues and if it occurs in the body cavities like uh, pleural spaces and uh, pericardial space and peritoneal spaces it is called as a uh, effusion normally in a normal person it, uh, it the, uh, the movement of the fluid from the blood vessel into the interstitial or into the body cavity is controlled by two pressures mainly by two pressures it's called hydrostatic pressure and plasma colloid osmotic pressure <coughs> so in short called as osmotic pressure or colloid osmotic pressure Hydrostatic pressure is a pressure which makes the fluid to go out into the interstitial space or into the body cavity. It basically pushes the fluid out of the blood vessels. Whereas colloid osmotic pressure is the uh, pressure due to proteins which makes the fluid to come back into the blood vessel. Proteins mainly half more than half of the uh, protein plasma protein content is of albumin so it's mainly due to the albumin. Hydrostatic pressure and uh, plasma colloid osmotic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure is mainly at the arterial end which makes the fluid to get out easily and uh, which plasma colloid osmotic pressure is at the venular end which makes the fluid to get back into the uh, get back into the blood vessel basically keeping the tissue dry even if then in a normal person some amount of fluid gets out gets out into the interstitial spaces but the fluid is drained by a uh, system called as lymphatic drainage system which basically takes all the fluid in the interstitial spaces and then puts it back into the blood vessels through the thoracic duct mainly through the thoracic duct and uh, which basically helps in like keeping the tissues like kind of dry and preventing edema and effusion but if the rate of the net movement of the fluid if the net movement of the fluid or the rate or uh, the rate at which the fluid gets out into the interstitial spaces or the body cavities increases than the rate which then the rate at which the drainage happens then the rate at which the drainage of the through the lymphatic system happens that increases the fluid in the interstitial or the body cavities basically I'll, from now on I'll use only interstitial spaces body cavities is like effusion you can understand it and uh, if the you, you got it like if the interstitial space is the rate at which the fluid escapes out from the blood vessel into the interstitial spaces is more if it gets more than the rate at which the drainage happens to the drain lymphatic drainage system basically that leads to fluid accumulation accumulation into the interstitial space just outside the blood vessel and uh, that increases the fluid in the in the like interstitial spaces and if it happens like in the tissues it's called as edema and if it happens in uh, body cavities it's called as effusion the like pleural effusion pericardial effusion peritoneal effusion main, commonly called as ascites there are two types of edema fluids here that we need to look into edema can be edema fluid can be either inflammatory or non-inflammatory what do you mean by inflammatory? You might have studied in an um, inflammation, acute and chronic inflammation, acute inflammation, and inflammation is mainly marked by edema. Acute inflammation is mainly marked by one of the characteristic features when you look grossly and morphologically. It is marked by edema, the formation of, uh, uh, you can see the edema in an inflammation. Inflammation, edema, the inflammatory edema, at the, uh, mainly the fluid is called as exudate. 
and uh, the non-inflammatory edema is called as the transudate. The difference between exudate and transudate. Exudate is, it has cells, a lot of cells, like uh, you had, it has neutrophils in acute inflammation and lymphocytes in chronic inflammation and WBCs, RBCs and platelets and some um, uh, proteins, protein rich. Yeah, this exudate is like protein rich. It has large amount of protein content in it very much and compared to the transudate it's it happens it, it, it happens because like the if the pressure the hydrostatic pressure gets more than the osmotic pressure it happens due to that but and this this doesn't even has much more amount of protein because one of uh, less protein is one of the main causes of this uh, balance going off i will discuss about that later and uh, the transudate is look like mostly exudate. Exudate the inflammatory edema is mostly localized. Like inflammation, if happens, it only occurs at the place where inflammation is taking place. Most in most cases, but in the case a few cases like sepsis, it uh, mainly gets generalized. Generalized edema like subcutaneous edema and all that. Transudate is more main, mainly generalized as in subcutaneous sepsis. Uh, is an example for the exudate kind of the inflammatory edema um, cases. Uh, let's let's discuss much uh, like we will now discuss the various causes of edema. Causes of edema is like increased hydrostatic pressure. You see, we have discussed like the blood vessel and increased hydrostatic pressure. This is the hydrostatic pressure. Let me write it: hydrostatic pressure and. Uh, this thing that comes in is called colloid pressure, colloid osmotic pressure. Let it be that. Increased hydrostatic pressure. Increased hydrostatic pressure are mainly uh, increased in increases uh, in hydrostatic pressure are mainly caused by disorders that impair venous return. What does what do you mean by that? Increased venous return. We like look at this. Venous return, as I told you, at the venule, at the arterial end, the fluid gets out of the blood vessel, and at the venular end, it comes back into the blood vessel. But what happens if the venular, uh, what if happens if the, mm, like, if the venous return is impaired? If some, uh, if something blocks the vein, vein, the vein, uh, the blood from uh, the blood can't go back to the heart. It has, to, it has to mainly travel through the vein to get back. But if it can't, the Pressure in the blood vessel increases. Blood increases. Increase that indirectly, like additional additional pressure to the hydrostatic pressure, which makes the fluid to get out. And examples of, of this as a deep vein thrombosis, as in low, as in the lower extremities. Then the, that results into edema, which is confined to the affected part. Basically, increased uh, like hydrostatic pressure is mainly due to the, vein, uh, the blockage of the vein, uh, veins, like impaired venous return, which increases the hydrostatic, which increases the blood pressure, the bl pressure in the blood vessel in that, which in, uh, acts as an additional pressure to the hydrostatic pressure, which mainly which makes the fluid to get out of the blood vessel easily. Let's see the, about the reduced. The second cause of the edema is reduced plasma osmotic pressure. Reduced plasma osmotic pressure. What do you mean by that? Produ the osmotic pressure, the plasma osmo colloidal osmotic pressure, which was there at the venular end, decreases. This happens to, to many like albumin, the proteins, the protein content. The plasma colloid osmotic pressure is mainly due to the proteins. If the quantity of the proteins in the if the quantity of the proteins decreases in the blood. It mainly leads to the reduced plasma osmotic pressure, which indirectly prevents the fluid or which doesn't the pressure, the required pressure to take back all the fluid that has gone out at the arterial end will be reduced. The pressure will be reduced, hence the liquid can't be taken back in. So the reduced plasma osmotic pressure is mainly because of the decreased synthesis of uh, um, proteins, mainly in liver diseases. It is mainly due to in the liver diseases liver diseases which uh, albumin is mainly synthesized in the liver and hence less uh, synthesis is mainly due, less synthesis like if injury liver diseases makes it less synthesis makes the less synthesis of uh, albumin which leads to the decreased uh, 
plasma osmotic pressure. Few examples of a uh, few examples where the pro uh, one of the example was that in the liver diseases, the due to less synthesis or decreased synthesis of albumin, um, the plasma osmotic pressure decreases. But the other example is the in the nephrotic syndromes, in uh, the cases where the nephro uh, the glomerular the glomerular filtration is defected, where the albumin crosses out through the porous gl glomerular cap. Uh, capillaries and it gets into the tubules and gets filtered out and gets uh, excreted through the urine. More in, a, in the nephrotic syndrome, with excess sec excretion of uh, albumin takes place, which leads to like dilution. Called it as dilution. Like if the normal, uh, if the dilution, may basically it means dilution. In normal blood, the amount of uh, albumin, which was about f m the all, all, all among all the uh, plasma proteins, it was like 50 percent. But as the uh, in the nephrotic syndrome, the uh, protein gets excreted through the urine, the amount of the plasma proteins get decreases. It, it, it decreases, hence leading to dilution of the blood, which leads to more fluid in it, and le which uh, that basically decreases the plasma osmotic pressure, which leading to increased hydrostatic pressure, leading making the fluid to get out of the blood vessels into the interstitial spaces or body cavities. And then let's back, uh, third cause of the edema is sodium and water retention. What do you understand by that? Sodium and water retention, this is ba this basically happens due to the like decreased renal perfusion. Decreased renal perfusion causes the activation of the in renin angiotensin mechanism which sets back the in, which sets it, which sets the renal perfusion back to normal but this happens mainly like it has few steps so that uh, renin uh, angiotensin mechanism basically absorbs the sodium and water back into the body and as because the, the pressure and the renal perfusion has been decreased the activation of the renin uh, angiotensin mechanism leads to the increased blood pressure increased bp increased bp blood pressure of the body increased blood pressure of the body which basically means like narrowing of the blood vessels like constriction of the blood vessels which like increasing the hydrostatic pressure which like increases the uh, more high, the blood pressure indirectly adds the narrowing of the constriction of the blood vessels indirectly adds to the hydrostatic pressure which like increases the hydrostatic pressure and moreover the additional um, addition of uh, this uh, increases the effect by like increasing the uh, retention of uh, plasma uh, sorry water and uh, sodium back into the body this absorbed sodium and uh, water is like increases the body volume back again blood volume back again sorry blood volume back to back which like for some time it like normal but then after as it as the blood volume increases along with the increased blood pressure along with the increased blood pressure if the blood volume increases the fluid in the blood vessels tends to move out back because the, uh, there is no decreased uh, like there ha there is decreased plasma osmotic pressure but even in the uh, uh, decreased plasmosic pressure and there is increased hydrostatic pressure because of the increased BP as well as the hydrostatic pressure which was previously there. This leads to the increased much more this uh, renin angiotensin mechanism basically exacerbates the edema and makes the situation much more worse. This and then the fourth cause of the edema is lymphatic obstruction. Lymphatic obstruction is mainly due to the fibrosis, invasive tumors and infections that can disrupt the lymphatic vessels and impair the tra like impair the drainage of the drainage mechanism of the interstitial fluid resulting in lymphedema in basically edema <coughs> it, it's localized like in, it, it's mainly in the affected part of the body where the lymphatic drainage system has been uh, disrupted due to the tumors and uh, fibrosis. A dramatic example of this is the uh, filariasis cases, filariasis, it's due to the parasitic filariasis in which the, or the organism induces um, lymphatic obstruction leading to, lymph, uh, leading to the fibrosis of the lymphatic channels and lymph nodes, mainly resulting in the edema of the external genitalia and the lower limbs that is so massive to that it has gotten the name of elephantiasis which represents it to the elephant so big uh, 
lower limbs and external genital layer and uh, it also affects the ability to better take off the cancer in the breast cancer patients which uh, it has gotten into which has go which has gotten into and obstructed the lymphatic drainage making making it much more difficult to get all the cancer back in the uh, get all the cancer extracted and cut off from the uh, uh, breast cancer patients uh, so let's get uh, now let's see the flow chart here it basically you know, summarizes the mechanism of systemic edema in the heart failure and renal failure and malnutrition heart failure causes two two cases here like in in heart failure there is like increased hydrostatic pressure if it if it is increased by hydrostatic pressure it basically means more the the pressure which is more than uh, oh, sorry i just took it down the hydro increased hydrostatic pressure which is like this is more this pressure is more than the plasma osmotic pressure which basically means fluid is able to go out but is less able to come back in which generally causes uh, edema which generally causes edema a decreased blood flow to the renal system basically increases the renin angiotensin system which is just spoke about this retention of sodium and water which increases the blood volume which increases basically causes edema malnutrition and the decreased hepatic synthesis of the proteins and the nephrotic syndrome which leads to the excretion of the proteins which are already there in the blood which basically leads to decreased plasma albumin decreased plasma albumin causes decreased plasma osmotic pressure because the plasma osmotic pressure is mainly due to the plasma proteins and much part of the plasma proteins is occupied by albumin so decreased plasma albumin leads to decreased plasma osmotic pressure which then gets back to edema let's talk about the morphology of the edema most common is the subcutaneous uh, most commonly the edema is seen in subcutaneous tissue lungs and brain most commonly it is seen it, uh, although it is generalized but uh, it can happen to in any organ any place of the body but it is mainly seen in uh, subcutaneous tissues lungs and brain subcutaneous edema there are like uh, so one of the most common type of it is in the subcutaneous edema subcutaneous edema can be like more diffuse or conspicuous in uh, um, regions with high hydrostatic pressure so its distribution as often like the place of the subcutaneous edema is mainly dependent on the gravity hence it is called as also called as dependent edema like in a place if a person suffering from subcutaneous edema if it uh, in the lower limb the in mainly the lower limbs uh, if a person stands and the edema is mainly in the lower limb because of the gravity because uh, the more the, uh, the fluid tends to come down due to gravity and when the person sleeps uh, the um, edema is mainly at the near the sacrum the sacral region and uh, hence the subcutaneous edema is uh, called as dependent edema which depends on the gravity the two like there are two types of subcutaneous edema in that pitting edema and uh, non pitting edema pitting edema and non pitting edema what do you mean by pitting edema it's like simple like in in the case of subcutaneous edema if you press the finger on the <coughs> subcutaneous edema and uh, that after removal of the pressure at the point at the uh, after removing of uh, removal of the pressure if the if that pressure le leaves a uh, pit on the skin without uh, letting the edema come back Uh, at, it, at its place that's called as pitting edema and a non pitting edema is exactly opposite of it which um, after you remove the finger after or after you remove the applying pressure the edema comes back to its normal place but it takes a lot of time in the pitting edema to come back to its normal place edema like edema from renal dysfunction often appears initially in parts of the body containing loose connective tissues edema from the renal dysfunction like appears in place where the, the where there is more loose connective tissue like for example in the eyelids it's called as a periorbicular orbital edema periorbital edema and then pulmonary edema pulmonary edema is mainly concerned with lungs L uh, due to the presence of the edema the weight of the lungs is 2 uh, to 3 times more than its normal weight and then the section yields the section of the lung of a pulmonary edema patient yields 
frothy fluid blood tinged fluid which is mainly due to the uh, f- fluid present fluid that comes out of the blood vessels along with some of the uh, very few blood cells will be there uh, in it frothy blood tinged fluid which comes out into the lungs and uh, the section yields this and uh, the pulmon the fluid in the pulmonary edema mainly is present around the blood was around the capillaries and then the alveolar septa and the alveolar septa which along uh, around the blood vessels uh, just in the alveolar septa which uh, like hinders the trans uh, transferring of the gases from the uh, alveoli into the blood uh, blood uh, into the blood hinders the gases and impedes it, it not only just impedes it but also like you know um provides an environment for the bacterial growth and the edema in the alveolar spaces uh, makes the increases the growth uh, makes provides a better environment for the bacterial growth as it, is, it doesn't has any neutrophils as it's a transudate it doesn't has any neutrophils which actually kills on the microorganisms but as it is transudate it provides an environment for the flourishment of the microorganisms bacterial and uh, makes the body much susceptible to bacterial infections let's see the uh, next edema is the brain edema brain edema is like more generalized or uh, it can be more generalized or localized localized like specific part of the brain gets the edema and the rest doesn't the generalized like the whole brain gets the pa- edema based on the pathologic process or injury it can be decided clinical features of the edema includes it's range from merely annoying to rapidly fatal it can be nothing uh, it can be like uh, clinical features of the edema is like it can be due to some injury but it can be either just simple or it can lead to fatal causes fatal like fatal ends clinical features of the subcutaneous edema is like it's mostly it signals the underlying cardiac or renal diseases which are present and that causes the subcutaneous edema subcutaneous edema is just a condition of the underlying disease it uh, tells us about whether the signals are due to the cardiac or renal diseases <clears throat> and then it or uh, subcutaneous edema also hinders the uh, wound healing process and uh, <clears throat> wound healing process which leads to long exposure of the wound uh to the environment leading to leading it to become much more uh, worse if not taken care of uh patients with subcutaneous uh, patients uh, injured of subcutaneous edema injured may have long time in recovering from that injury as it doesn't allow the wound healing so quick as it happens normally pulmonary edema it's mainly due to like left ventricular failure renal failure acute respiratory distress syndrome all these cases like leads to the pulmonary edema and uh, as i said not, not only the fluid collects in the alveolar septa around the capillaries and impede oxygen diffusion but edema fluid in the alveolar spaces also creates a favorable environment for bacterial infection that further leads to many more diseases that can actually be caused it might be due to initially it might be just due to like some renal failure but afterwards some of the bacterial infection the bacterial growth the bacteria grows there and then it causes some other disease which is much more fatal than just renal failure alone and then the next is the pulmonary effusion now let's come uh, let's talk about effusion effusion edema both are same pulmonary effusion accompanies pulmonary edema if the pulmonary uh, if it do, uh, the if it the pulmonary edema is not taken care of much then it converts into pulmonary effusion and the peritoneal effusion also called as ascites it's due mainly due to the portal hypertension brain edema is like life threatening uh, generalized especially generalized brain edema is like life threatening because the skull is, is so intact that it doesn't allow the as it can't actually uh, spread as it happens in many other body parts but in the brain it doesn't uh, the, there is a bony case that uh, imprisons the brain inside it and skull which uh, doesn't allow the edema to spread uh, around there's only one opening that is present which can actually take in the edema edematous sp- uh, spreading of the brain uh, 
that's foramen magnum. Foramen magnum is like her herniation of the brain through the foramen magnum leading to uh, or compression of the blood uh, vascular supply of the brain stem leads to injury, it causes injury to the medullary centers which are present in the brain stem that can cause death as uh, the uh, vital centers for the uh, involuntary reactions like uh, the, uh, the heartbeat for the heartbeat and uh, for the respiratory rate and all the centers which manage these uh, uh, life essential functions like they will be in, uh, under stress hence leading to death if not uh, uh, looked into f immediately. So that brings us to the end of the topic uh, edema and depression.